The gender specialist I was taken to, taken to see told my parents that I needed to be put on puberty blocking drugs right away. They asked my parents a simple question. Would you rather have a dead daughter or a living transgender son? A month later, when I was 13, I had my first testosterone injection. It's caused permanent changes to my body. My voice will forever be deeper, my jawline sharper, my nose longer, my bone structure um, permanently masculinized, my Adam's apple more prominent, my fertility unknown. I look in the mirror sometimes and I feel like a monster. Just devastating there. Powerful emotional testimony from Chloe Cole. She's the victim of gender transition therapy, speaking yesterday at the House Judiciary Committee's hearing on the dangers and due process violations of gender affirming care. She was born a woman and at a very young age, a teenager underwent gender transition therapy, including a double mastectomy at age 15. She regrets that decision, of course, made with both her family and doctors, and is advocating for those who might be in similar situations. Chloe Cole joins us now, live on National Report. Thank you so much, Chloe, for taking the time, and, and thank you for sharing your story, of course, with all of America yesterday. How are you feeling today, um, almost a full day after yesterday's hearing? Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like this hearing was a big step in the right direction. There is still a lot to do, but I've only really testified in state legislature around this. And the fact that this has gotten into, that the discussion has gotten into the federal government is a huge step. It is. I've seen your testimony again before state legislatures, and we've heard red states, Republican led states, uh, go forward and prevent these sort of surgeries and hormone therapies for minors uh, based on, on some of your firsthand testimony. But at, as you say, at the federal level, it is being met with opposition from lawmakers. And we saw that yesterday from Democratic Pennsylvania Congresswoman Mary Gay Scanlon, who says gender affirming care, meaning puberty blockers, sex reassignment surgeries for minors, is essential to the mental health and well being of trans youth. Let's listen to this sound together. Access to gender affirming care is essential to the mental health and well being of trans youth. This care is tailored to both the mental and physical health needs of patients, as well as their developmental stage in life. And I can see you disagree with that. What's your response? It's not essential, but detrimental. Mm. They're pushing transition on these kids who can't really fathom just how much it will affect them later in life or really understand what permanence means. Right. And the, the younger you go with transitioning medically, the more dangerous it is. It becomes less and less reversible. And, you know, we, we've seen this, though, with medical professionals giving, professionals giving the green light for these sort of surgeries and parents saying, this is what's best for my child, who claims to be a different gender. In fact, one of the witnesses, Miriam, Miriam Reynolds, a professional counselor, allowed her own child to pursue transgender medical interventions. It was very emotional, and you commented on that matter. Let's show our viewers. I just want to set the record straight that I don't hate her. I don't think anybody in this room hates her. Um, in fact, I, I see my own mother and my own father in her and that she clearly, she dearly loves her child and she's doing the best with what she's been given. And unfortunately, it's not much. And for that, I'm sorry. I mean, I think every parent deserves the most the yeah, utmost grace and guidance with how to help their child. Chloe, why did you feel that statement was so necessary in that moment? Throughout the hearing, she spoke a lot how, about how she was afraid for her child's well-being of this being taken away from her child, the only option that she was really given. I mean, these parents are told that it's either transition or death. They're not given any other option. They're not told that they're supposed to wait it out. And if they even suggest that, then they're threatened with the suicide of their own child. And that's exactly what they did with my own parents. And I, I don't think that woman is a bad person at all. I think she really is just doing the best with what she's been given with the other adults who are supposed to, supposed to help her with raising her child. 
And I wanted to give that grace that I wish had been given to my own parents. That's so, so kind of you to share this again so publicly, your own personal story. We'll end with this. Just your, your final message to lawmakers, those who actually have a say in whether or not, you know, children would be able to be transitioned at such a young age when it comes to uh, state rules. What would you like them to know? I think that child, childhood transition should be banned in its entirety. It should not even be an option to children just because, I mean, it really is a physical intervention for a psychological condition. Um, there, is a, there is a representative yesterday who referred to it as a reproductive and sexual lobotomy, and I think that's exactly what it is. And it's being performed on children who can't really understand what exactly it means and how it will affect them. Sure. We don't know. We don't know the long-term impacts of these surgeries on young children as they mature. Chloe Cole, thanks so much for joining us today and sharing your story.